All right, welcome to Will Star Mysteries. What I have for you today is three Bigfoot encounter reports from the state of Idaho. Now for any of you that don't know, Idaho is full of wilderness areas. Actually, it has one of the biggest wilderness areas in the lower 48 states. One of these encounters, a teenage boy, is so terrorized by the Bigfoot that he... You know what? You're just going to have to wait for the video. If you're new to the channel and you like these kind of videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button for me. And everybody, if you like the video, make sure you hit that like button. All right, let's get to it. August 1973, Valley County, Idaho. In the early 70s, 1973 to be exact, I and my hunting partner had an encounter that occurred near a tributary of the South Fork of the Salmon River drainage near the Frank Church Wilderness area east of McCall and west of Yellow Pine Island. Idaho. Off a remote road on a late August evening while setting up camp to prepare for a mountain goat hunt, my friend and I had a strange encounter. We had set up camp at the back of my truck, which I had backed off the road into a small clearing backed by thick brush. Behind the brush was a small meadow and a dark timbered basin surrounded on three sides by steep rocky ridges. The fourth side dropped off into the canyon leading to a portion of the south fork of the Salmon River. It had gotten quite dark and we hung a lantern in a tree over our cook table and Coleman stove. We had put on some nice thick steaks that were cooking and smelling up the whole basin. All of a sudden we heard this blood curdling scream followed by a whistle not far from camp. A responding like scream and whistle came from high up and to our left and some distance away. We immediately grabbed our rifles, loaded up and leaned them against the table within quick and easy reach. For a while we heard thrashings in the thick brush that indicated the rather close presence of a large animal. The strangest thing happened then. Although we were shaking in our boots, we both looked at each other in the same breath and said to each other, these guns are worthless. Strangely, we unloaded and stored the guns in the rack of the truck. We then returned to our meal because we were starving. Then there were more screams, whistles, and thrashings. We picked up our stove and table and moved so that the truck was between us and the noise. All hell broke loose and as the animal moved through the brush and took up a position in front of the truck as to where it could see us. That was all we could take. We folded up our stove with the steak still in it and threw everything into the back of the truck and jumped into the cab. We just sat there shaking for a while. After a while, I pointed to my spotlight and said to my friend, Should I use it? He just shrugged his shoulders and continued to shake and stare at the floor, saying, Let's get the hell out of here. Curiosity was outrunning common sense and fear at the moment, so I pointed the spotlight in the general direction of where the creature was last heard and turned it on. The creature whirled as the light hit it and began boulder hopping up through a steep rock slide on two legs at incredible speed and agility. I did not get a good look at his face as it whirled away from the light though, but it was definitely standing erect, slight forward slump, and very agile on two feet, not like a waddling bear standing on its rear feet. It was dark brown to black in color. I have come to grips with this over the years, but my friend will not even speak to me about the incident. While the encounter scared the blank out of me, I now have a desire to see this creature. Intuitively, I feel that the animal had no real intent to hurt me or my buddy. If it had wanted to hurt us, it had many chances. October 1996, Valley County, Idaho. We were camped at an old abandoned mining town and mine near Deadwood Reservation in October 1996. Our son had an encounter with an unidentifiable being. My husband's company was helicopter logging near an area that was once an old town and mine out in the forest. It was opening day of the deer season and our son, who was 14 at the time, got up early to go hunting near camp. We were near Deadwood River, which was actually little more than a creek. He went out and took his rifle to see if he could get a good buck that morning. He crossed the river and went up a hill to where he could get a better look at the river and the flats below. Our pilots were camped down the river about a quarter of a mile from our camp. As our boy was looking down towards the pilot's camp, he observed what he thought was a bear down on the flats near the river. He thought that it was a little unusual that the bear was walking very steadily on his hind legs more like a human. The more he watched it, the more uncomfortable he began to feel. 
as he was watching it, it suddenly looked up and started staring back at him. He felt sudden fear race through him as he felt its eyes lock onto him. He told us that he has never felt that feeling before or since then. He said that it was very dark in color and that it was very tall and hairy. After it had stared at him for a time, it proceeded in walking towards where he was standing. Realizing that it was moving in his direction, he turned around and started racing for camp as fast as he could. When he got into camp, he ran into our fifth wheel trailer, shut the door, and locked it behind him. He then closed all the curtains and blinds. He was absolutely scared to death that this thing that he saw was coming to get him. He would not come out of the camper at all until I took him home two days later. He kept the doors locked all the time and the curtains drawn, even in broad daylight. The other unusual thing that we noticed up there was that in the basement slash boiler room of the old boarding house that was near our log landing camp, it looked like a huge nest in the corner near the old boiler. It was made of evergreen boughs and leaves. It looked like it had been slept in by a very large animal. The floor was soft dirt and it had a very strong odor all over in that part of the building. It was open to the outside by an open doorway. Several other people working for the same logging company had different sightings and encounters within the same area and time frame, just a couple of days apart from our son's encounter. At the time that our son had his encounter, the water truck driver also had an encounter. The evening of my son's encounter, the water truck driver came to our camp and told of a strange encounter the previous evening while filling his water truck about a half mile down river from our camp. He said that it was about 3 a.m. and he was waiting behind his truck for it to fill up. He had the floodlights on so that he could see the hose in the water. He said that he had an overwhelming feeling that he was being watched. The Deadwood River is quite shallow and not very wide. So the other side of the river is very close, about 25 feet. He told us that he looked up and across the river to a set of eyes that were watching him from behind a tree on the other side of the river. The creature was very large and dark and had very piercing eyes. He said that it was much taller than a man and moved upright and quietly from one tree to another, all the time watching him. He said that he had driven a water truck for many years and he had never encountered anything like that before. He put in his resignation the next day after his sighting. We also found out that others had encounters of their own near our area. The logging boss and his two sons had something chase them down the hill above our camp the night before. They said that something was screaming at them from behind the trees and rocks as they were trying to get to camp. October 1985, Valley County, Idaho. At age 12, my cousin and I embarked on our first official hunting trip with my other cousin and father. We set up camp early in the day a few miles north and east of McCall, Idaho. The day was October 25th. The weather was cold and clear with a corona around the moon telling of the coming snow. It was dusk and my cousin and I had just finished setting up our lean-to shelter about 70 yards away from my dad and my other cousin had set up their tent. We both got a feeling of being watched. We turned and saw a silhouette of a very large biped observing us from only about 10 feet away. Scared, we turned and reached for our rifles, but by the time we turned back, the creature was gone. My older cousin was quite a prankster, so immediately we thought it was him, but he was still at the campfire talking to my dad. In the morning, no tracks were found as the ground was nearly frozen. That next day, we walked up into the nearby drainage about 7 miles from camp. At an elevation of around 7,200 feet, the area is covered with a huge granite slabs and sandy soil from the erosion of the rocks themselves. About mid-morning, we both heard a low, guttural yell, which sounded like someone was saying, Hey! several times. It was one of those sounds that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Later, my father told us that this wasn't the first time he had heard this odd yell. Evidently, when he had started hunting with my grandfather, they both had heard the same type of vocalization on various occasions. Since this initial trip, I have hunted the area 19 years and have heard the same type of yell four other times all in the same area. I can honestly say this sound is like no other I have ever experienced. From mountain lion screams, elk bugling, deer and moose grunting, and bear snorts.
On other hunts into the area, the sound has been witnessed by two other hunting companions. It always seems to occur in the same drainage. Initially, I thought it might have been the wind echoing off the rocks, but I have been in there at all different types of weather conditions and can testify that this is some type of animal-generated sound. All right, so there it is. What do you guys think about those encounters? Imagine being a teenager and being so frightened that you won't come out of the camper for three days. That had to be a very traumatic experience for that young man. I want you guys to do me a favor and leave me comments and let me know what you guys would do if that would happen to you when you were a teenager. Would you react the same way? Remember, he thought the thing was coming after him, coming to get him. Alright, so if you like the video, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? And that's where we're going to leave it. So always remember, where there is a Will Star, there is definitely a way. Will Star, out.